In today's journey, we're going to bottle our one gallon Merlot. Although this tutorial would work on almost anything that you're going to bottle. We almost always bottle directly from a bottling bucket, unless we're doing it from a keg. Some people will hook up a bottling wand to the end of an auto siphon or racking cane to do their bottling. Their claim being that it exposes the wine again to oxygen. To those I say, if that's what ruins your wine, you did something else terribly wrong. Only people who get paid to make wine should be worried that much. As long as you sanitize everything properly and don't splash it around, everything should be fine. So with your bottling bucket, mini auto siphon, bottling wand, bottles and closures, and a way to raise your clarified wine up, we're ready to start the celebration that is called bottling day. But wait, take a small sample of your wine first and make sure that it is actually clarified before moving forward. Do not bottle cloudy wine as it will not clarify in the bottles. Give it seven more days. If it's still having trouble after then, comment below and we'll see if we can help out. Once your wine is clear, insert the mini auto siphon into the opening and give it one solid pump to start the flow from one vessel to the other. The tip of your auto siphon should be just above the bottom of the vessel. This will help avoid from transferring over any of the lees, another name for the crud at the bottom of the vessel. If you do get any that transfers over, don't worry about it as the benefit of using a bottling bucket means that we can let it sit for a half hour before actually doing the bottling and that will give it time to settle out. And to save some time, we're going to speed up through some of the slower bits here. Although that doesn't mean that we're not going to take a little time to make fun of Phil for forgetting to close the bottling valve. Always make sure it's closed. It's clearly labeled open and closed. When you're looking your buckets square in the face, you should be able to read the words closed right on there. It does look like a lot more wine than it actually is though. Now that we're getting towards the bottom, we want to be more mindful of the angle that we hold the vessel at. Otherwise, we will lose suction at this point and it will be really hard to restart the siphon. Worst case, just pour anything that's left into a glass and enjoy later. And don't worry about that crud at the bottom, that's just the lees. When you get everything you can, the suction will break and then you'll get an air rush going through the hose. This is no big deal as you can just pick the end of the hose up and let it drain into the bucket as you finish off the transfer. Now we're going to speed through Phil doing some of the cleanup work. He's also going to place the bottling bucket on a hook in the ceiling that we use for these types of situations. About four to five feet off the ground is what we recommend for normal people to do. Everyone's setup's gonna be a little different. It's about what's comfortable for you. Just like when it comes to choosing your bottles to put your wine in. It is nowhere near as important as the glass you drink it out of. But once you've chosen your bottle, tip it to the side as you take the tip of the bottling wand and press it all the way to the bottom of the bottle. With the faucet open to the bottling spigot, the wine should start to flow. You will want to fill it to about two finger widths about where the cork will end up, about three inches from the top of the bottle. If you are using the 750 milliliter bottles, you will need about four to five of them for this one gallon batch. Of course, that may not be enough to share with everyone you want to, so you can use twice as many of the 375 milliliter bottles instead. Don't feel that you have to get punted bottles, as they can be trickier to fill, actually. Punted bottles are more of a sign of tradition than they are of an actual function in the modern era. Though some will use it in order to help collect sediment at the bottom. Color, on the other hand, is there to help to protect against UV light coming from the sun or other sources. However, if you properly store your wine, that shouldn't be a problem anyways. Wine should be stored in about 52 to 58 degrees Fahrenheit in a dark place. And don't think that you have to use wine bottles, especially if you're just getting into the hobby. We often put at least one bottle into an easy cap so that we can sample it throughout the aging process. Although a purist may scoff, there is no rule or law about what you have to put your wine into. Our recommendations is that it's at least airtight and holds liquid. In fact, sometimes when we're in a pinch, we will even reach for just a regular beer bottle and a crown cap. So long as it's drunk within two years, there's no problem with it. It just may not be considered proper in certain circles. We however find this technique to be extremely useful when, when there's not enough to fill a 750 milliliter bottle, but you still have wine to bottle. And the best part is, is that if you're a beer brewer just getting into winemaking, you don't need to make the extra investment of bottles just yet. It also means that you can put off buying corks in a corker for now. Speaking of corkers, while the easy double lever corker is functional, we do not recommend it if you're going to do a lot of winemaking. And if you do use it, use the smaller diameter corks. 
The easy cap bottles, on the other hand, while convenient, aren't the best investment to make for doing entire six gallon batches. If you are gonna do six gallon batches, get the Portuguese floor corker. It is well worth the investment. Now we could do an entire video on corks alone, but the two that we recommend the most are the nine by one and a half Noma corks, which are synthetic corks and Phil's favorite to use, or use the first quality corks if you would like to save a little bit of money. Their only downside is that they're a little less idiot proof and you need to make sure that your wine is always on its side. Although not just yet, we will want to give it three days standing upright before we put them on their sides. This gives the cork a little time to expand back out after being forced through the corker. Now excuse us as we finish bottling this batch. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to help support us. And if you liked what you see, check out some of our other videos here.